The Big East is a big conference that features several NBA arenas, a few one-of-a-kind smaller venues, and one very historic venue. So with that being said, here they are. Hinkle Fieldhouse, Butler Bulldogs. This was that historic venue I was referring to. If you're an NFL fan, you might notice this arena's resemblance to the city's football stadium. It was actually partially inspired by Hinkle Fieldhouse which has been an iconic part of the Indianapolis sporting landscape since the 20s. It was one of the first arenas to feature unobstructed views of the court, due to the innovative use of arched steel trusses rather than pillars. A lot of train stations have a similar thing going on. It has quite a unique layout and that's partially due to the fact that the court used to run in the opposite direction. So you've got two tiers of seating behind the baseline that's right on top of the court, and the sideline seating is at a much shallower angle and stretches all the way back to those rather nice windows up there. I can see why people call it a cathedral. It looks incredible in here. CHI Health Center, Omaha. Creighton Blue Jays. I don't think this one could be any more different from the last one. It's an arena, convention center, and ballroom combined, hence the elongated nature of the building. But its multi-purpose nature doesn't end there. It actually hosts the US Olympic swimming trials every four years. But when the court is laid out, you wouldn't even know about all that other stuff. It's just a normal modern venue, and a pretty good one at that. Part of the reason why the Blue Jays average just shy of a capacity crowd, giving them the highest average attendance in the conference. Wind Trust Arena, DePaul Blue Demons. Is that the flag of Honduras up there on the roof? It's the newest arena in the conference and the exterior very much reflects that. It also reflects the surrounding high-rise buildings, quite literally. I've got to say, the interior looks even better. Absolutely stunning. I love that skyline floor. And they've even gotten creative with the angles of the seating and the stairways in some areas. Also, in the daytime, plenty of light filters through those big windows over there. And on top of all that, it features a comparatively huge video board. I'm thinking that's why the roof had to bulge upwards. Capital One Arena, Georgetown Hoyas. A team that makes the most of the fact that they play in an NBA arena. It has a pretty uninspiring exterior compared to most NBA arenas, but it's the inside that matters most, and after a recent renovation, it's looking fantastic. It features one of the largest 360 degree video boards in the world, and basically where there's a flat space, there is a screen of some sort. Other than that, it's a pretty conventional triple tiered seating layout for the most part. Fiserv Forum, Marquette Golden Eagles. Fiserv Forum is an extraordinary piece of architecture. I love that swooping roof made from thousands of zinc panels. I guess that's to prevent the arena from getting sunburned. There's not quite as much bling on the inside as there are some other newer NBA arenas, but it looks fantastic regardless. Oh, and interestingly, it's the world's first bird-friendly arena. No, there aren't birds flying about the place on the inside, but the exterior has been designed so birds don't fly into it and die, because birds are pretty damn stupid. There's a reason why you don't see dolphins flying into windows. Dunkin' Donut Center, Providence Friars. Dunkin' Donuts is a perfect sponsor for the Friars home, if you disregard the spelling. But not the perfect name for a basketball arena. It sounds like what you would call a failed dunk attempt. I have only ever dunked donuts. The venue was built back in the early 70s and looks as such from the outside for the most part. The interior, while still being fairly simple, is much more modern. One downside is that due to a lack of retractable seating, it is quite apparent that it's used for hockey as well not quite as intimate as you'd like. Prudential Center, set in Hall Pirates. I did mention that there are a lot of NBA arenas in this conference, and while this was initially intended to be the home of the Nets, it's just the NHL team that remained in New Jersey. Anyway, not important. It's a huge venue by both capacity and volume, so even a respectable average attendance of around 11,000 still leaves it looking and feeling empty. But their on-campus venue, which I think they do still play the occasional game at, has a capacity of less than 2,000. 
so I'm sure they're more than happy to play here. It's a world-class venue. Madison Square Garden, St. John's Red Storm. It's always interesting to see the unique aspects of American English. Where I'm from, a garden is like flowers and trees, stuff like that. But I gotta say, I like your version of a garden slightly better. It's the world's most famous arena. Everyone knows it's the home of the Knicks, but maybe not St. John's, who have been playing here almost as long as the Knicks have. But the campus is not all that far away, so it makes sense. It certainly has a unique seating layout. When you think it has ended, there's another tier on top, including these chase bridges that hang above the conventional seating. I suppose when you spend a billion dollars on a renovation, you better have something to show for it that no one else has. They also play at Karnaseka Arena, which is quite a simple and compact on-campus venue, made extra intimate due to the low ceiling, which is even below the top row of seats. But I don't want to talk too long about this one. St. John's have had their fair share of attention. Harry A. Gamble Pavilion, Yukon Huskies. It wouldn't be a college basketball conference without a big old dome. Although this is not actually that old having opened in 1990, and the roof is definitely not old, being replaced just a few years ago. The roof looks the same on the inside as it does on the outside, which is interesting. Anyway, enough about the roof. They like to call this place the college basketball capital of the world. But, like South Africa, college basketball has three capitals. Allen Fieldhouse is the executive capital, Assembly Hall is the judicial capital, and of course, this is the legislative capital. Man, I kind of feel sorry for the people who click on these videos expecting some sort of expert analysis. Excel Center. Ah, oh, they've got a second home as well. It is even bigger than the last one, so I guess I should give it equal treatment. This venue got off to a rough start with the roof collapsing a few years after it opened. They rebuilt it, opting not to use Jenga blocks this time, and it hasn't collapsed since. Despite its age, it looks great on the inside, and I love that steep seating. The main downside is that once more, the seating behind the baseline looks a little cluttered and unsightly in basketball mode, but no big deal. Finneron Pavilion, or just the Pavilion, filling over Wildcats. In a previous video about football stadiums, I did mention how this extraordinary roof design outshines the adjacent football stadium, but it looks just as incredible if not better on the inside. The seating is almost triangular following the form of the roof. It doesn't feature a fully fledged Sentong video board, but instead a screen in each corner, as well as just a tiny little Sentong board, presumably because the ceiling is too low. It's the smallest main venue in the conference, but they do play at Wells Fargo Center when a bigger capacity is required. Sintas Center, Xavier Musketeers. It's not the most exciting exterior, but it's by no means ugly. However, the inside is looking pretty fresh, as it was given a bit of a makeover a few years back. It's not the typical seating layout. One side is almost cut off, with only a small section of seats and a balcony. Perhaps the best thing about this venue is something that's not immediately obvious. Within the building is a bar. Okay, not very surprising, but that's a genuine 100 year old cherry wood bar in a modern basketball arena. Classy touch. And that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, consider subscribing. We'll be going through all the Div 1 conferences eventually. Thanks for watching, have a good one.